Hi, my name is Ron Dorn, and I'd like to give you a short presentation about doing the Hawaii Lab Stage C Task 2. It's best done if I share my screen and then show you the PowerPoint that I prepared to help explain this task. This task has you explore the glaciers that were once on top of Mauna Kea. Alexis Ruiz, an ASU student, modified basically artistically this space shuttle view of Mauna Kea so you can see what the ice cap used to look like about 20,000 years ago. The lower image is of today where the color change you see, the lighter colored are the glacial deposits called till that rested on top of Mauna Kea. The lighter color is because the glacial deposits are about 20,000 years old and they've accumulated a coating of silica glaze. <coughs> Excuse me. I apologize. And this is an electron microscope view that I took of the silica glaze that's about as thick as maybe three or four pieces of your hair that gives it you this lighter coloration. So in the game, you will see the Landsat image and you'll see the lighter coloration that defines the edge of the glacial deposits. The task in this question is for you to estimate the maximum thickness in meters of this ice cap. The Makanaka is the name of the ice cap given uh, to her about 20,000 years ago for Mauna Kea. And look at the choices. They're very different. You have 105 meters, 40, 60, and 30. There's big differences in elevation. So the precision is not so important as just gathering the data and doing your best. So I need to back up and explain to you sort of how you're gonna do it in a theory. In a regular Alpine glacier that you might find in the Alps or in the Sierra Nevada or the Colorado Rockies, the glacier exists at a maximum state. And at this maximum state, there's avalanches that occur where rocks fall onto the glacier surface. And the glacier is actually cleaning up all the avalanche debris. Then when the glacier melts away, when it ablates, it leaves behind literally a line defining the highest elevation of that glacier surface, the trim line. And you can use it to estimate the maximum height of the glacier. But on Mauna Kea, and again, this is an artistic portrayal of Mauna Kea with the ice cap on it by Alex Alexis Ruiz, an ASU student. The image on the right is an aerial photograph of Mauna Kea where you can see the lighter colored material are the glacial till. The cinder cones that are on top of Mauna Kea are splitting the flow of the glacial till. So you're having the glacial till go through the gaps in the cinder cones and they leave behind the stripe on the wall that basically the highest elevation of the light colored material you see there is the deposit left behind. So you're getting the ice cap flow being split by the topography and this is the same sort of thing that happens on Mount Rainier. So the lower right image is a Google Earth view of Mount Rainier where different topographic features today are splitting the flow of the glacier. So you're going to use the cinder cones that split the flow to estimate the maximum height of the glacier. So on the left is a view of the game where the avatar is sitting on top of a cinder cone. That cinder cone has to have been higher than the glacier or the flow would not have been split. The flow would have just gone up and over the cinder cone as it did in several cinder cones and it would have been plastered with the lighter colored till. But the fact that you can see the cinder cone in the game and it's sticking out means that the maximum elevation would be the elevation difference between the top of the cinder cone and the glacier deposits immediately to the side or immediately uphill. So the task is actually not that difficult. You're going to a location, you're popping up on top of the cinder cone, measuring the elevation, and then you're popping up behind the cinder cone, 
and you're simply subtracting the elevations to estimate that at this location, the maximum the glacier would have had to have been less than 120 meters in elevation or the cinder cone would not have split the flow. Then, after you've measured the elevation of Mauna Kea, the next step is not that difficult. We're going to just give it to you. We're going to tell you that the area of the Makanaka ice cap, as measured by Stephen Porter of the University of Washington, is about 70 square kilometers. So you're going to take your thicknesses that you've measured in different places, and you're going to average the thickness together. That's going to give you the depth. To estimate the volume of the ice cap, you simply multiply the depth, the average depth that you measured, to by the area. Depth times area equals volume. And it's important that you stay focused on the correct units, right? That the thickness is in meters, but look at the answer. The answers are in cubic meters. So you need to be able to convert 70 square kilometers and times the meters to get the units correct. You can use Google, you can use basic information on the web. It's up to you to do the conversion for how many square meters is 70 square kilometers, multiply it together, and then pick the closest answer. I can tell you that the none of the answers listed are even close is not the right answer. The correct answer has to be one of the other three. That's it for this presentation. I hope it was useful.